When you see the foreigners and international students around you, you see smiling faces, excitement and adventurous spirits. But what you don't see is that they are experiencing the four stages of culture shock. In the US alone, there were 1,094,792 international students from 2017 to 2018. In the same years, there was a 1.5% increase on the number of international students enrolled in academic programs. Stage 1, the honeymoon stage. In this first stage, everything in the new country is vibrant and exciting. The people and places that you come across are interesting and thrilling. Everything is an adventure, and opportunities seem endless. About leaving from Kenya to America, it was very, very exciting because you could see that big dream, like, I'm going to America, I'm going to go to New York, and all these big places where, you, where I could watch on TV. So it was really exciting to me. For me, it's, I feel very excited because um, I want to go to the other country to see the different people and different, different the com country. I was super happy. I was um, because I knew I was. I finally made it. I was very happy to be here. So um, it was just like this accomplishment that I've chased for so long, and then I finally I was here. Uh, so I excitement is it's all I like. All I felt. The first time I arrived in America, it was really good, very beautiful. I landed into New York uh, International Airport. That was the first entry, port of entry that I went to. So the people around me were so like very, very strange. I was like, wow, this is so good. The building was so beautiful. Everyone was so nice. I was like, oh, this is a place that I've been dreaming to go to right now. When I first time come here, I was very nervous. And um, um, because the English is um, the local language here, but my first language is Chinese. So when I, f when I first came to America, that was Searcy, Arkansas was my first time. Well, not, not my first time stepping because I, I stopped in Atlanta before. Uh, so that was cool. But when I first like landed and got out of the airport, that was here in Searcy, Arkansas. And um, when I first got here, like I've never heard of Searcy before or Arkansas or Harding. Uh, or anything like that, so I was expecting skyscrapers and things like that. Uh, and then I go into, I get into the the van, and they start driving, and all I see is like fields, and uh, and it was just hot. I remember that, uh, so I was a little disappointed, I guess. Uh, but it was just funny because I had this picture in my head of like crowded cities and things you see in the movies, of course, because that's the only like experience I've had before uh, when it comes to the United States. So. It was a little disappointing, it's like shocking, but I guess not a deal breaker. In 2017 to 2018, 56% of international students came from China, India, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Canada alone. Stage two, the frustration stage. This is the hardest stage of culture shock and varies for each person. A few months in, the international student starts to feel angry misunderstood, their homesickness increases. Raw emotions start to come out, such as feeling isolated, lonely, helpless, and a strong desire to return home. I think there's a difference uh, when we perceive things, for example, even like your own country and you know that you are going for a certain country just to visit that place. So your mindset is different because you, you know that you're going there for a short period of time. So if you're going there for a short period of time, then you don't have to really prepare yourself on how you're going to adapt into that culture. So you're going to be there, take the picture, and just learn new stuff, and just try to see all the differences, which is in that new country that you are visiting, and then you probably will come back to your country. But if, on the other side, you, are, you know that you're going to stay there for a long time, then you have to set your mind on how you're going to survive there, what you're going to eat, where you're going to live, how you're going to socialize with people. So you have a lot of to think about, uh, about, about living in, an, in your country. I think that the worst part about culture shock at, at first is not knowing what to do about it, because you, you just feel this like sadness or emptiness that you don't know exactly 
how to feel, uh, how to feel, because the only thing that would make you feel completely better would, would be to go back, uh, but you cannot do that. So I feel like um, figuring, figuring out what uh, is going to fill that void um, to not feel homesick anymore or to feel homesick to a less extent is the most complicated part because, um, again, it works differently on every single person, so it would be something different for, for every person. In my, case, in my case, was the comfort of other people. Um, so, but for someone else, it could be food. I don't know. Uh, like they're missing their mom's cooking. Uh, so how do you like find that here? When I first year come here, I very miss my parents and friends. Feel alone um, because um, it's not um, in China. They are. Uh, I mean, around my um, people is Chinese. I can use the Chinese to connect with them, but in America, sometimes when I, I remembered I first time I came to the Walmart to buy bought something that I can't describe that things, but I just use the form to translate. Like in the middle, like after, after the first semester in school was good, or the second semester, um, it was really hard. I think I've not told you that I'm also on the track team. So being on the track team, uh, I had some ways that we could train a, an athlete in Kenya. So when it came to here, it was very different because everything was kind of like, we have to be the person responsible for our own success because our coach requires our own results. So, and I thought that probably the coach should, you should be the one to push us, like to tell us what to do all the time. But, and many, many other things. So I realized actually in America, you have to be your own person, be responsible for your own stuff and walk through it. So I had to change a lot from that and adjust into it and try to balance now between the American and the Kenyan stuff. I have three brothers, but they're, all, they're only my half brother. So they're only my brothers uh, through my mom. And um, last year, um, uh, their, their dad passed away and I knew him pretty well. Um, and uh, my brothers took it really bad. Uh, it was really hard for them. Um, so my homesickness was like triggered like that, that day. Um, because I didn't know what to do. I wanted to like share their pain with them, especially because they shared it with me before. And I just wanted to give it back. I wanted to help them. I wanted to be with them. And that's when, when homesickness really gets you because um, maybe it's not even about being away or like somewhere else, it's, it's about the fact that you cannot be with these people that you really want to be with in that moment and, 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 and share this either painful or, uh, or happy memory for some other people. Um, so um, yeah, those, probably, those were probably the things that trigger me the hardest. Um, and it still hurts um, knowing that uh, I couldn't be there for them when they needed me the most um, and I really wanted to be with them. Uh, American culture has really transformed me to be whom I am right now. It triggered me, uh, it triggered my inner emotions actually to handle some few things in a different way. Uh, I do remember at some point, I, because I'm used to talking to people and just hanging around with people, so there was a situation whereby we had to go to a place, uh, a race. Uh, in that point, we were in a group of people. Uh, they were just sitting in front of me. And by that point, they were having a conversation about American culture, like maybe like basketball, American football. So those were new things to me, so I didn't know about them. So as they were having that conversation, it was really hard for me to jump into a conversation by that point because I proceeds really slowly to understand what they were meaning actually in English. By the time I have the meaning of what they were, they, they were intending to say, uh, they were already in another subject. So it was really hard and I felt like, actually, I think I'm not be, I, I don't belong here. Uh, I think I belong somewhere else. So it made me feel really bad about myself. I felt like I'm not supposed to be in America. Probably I should go back to my country. 
Statistics show that 40% of international students have no close friends amongst their American classmates, a rate that was especially high amongst East Asian students. Stage 3. The Adjustment Stage At this point, the foreigner slowly develops strategies to deal with the discomfort and starts feeling comfortable and confident in the new culture. They start accepting the differences between the cultures. This adjustment is a gradual process with highs and lows. Yes, I've tried to fit into American culture several times. <laughs> some of them, they become successful, uh, some of them, they're not successful. So, like, trying to fit into their food, uh, that's the most challenging part, because I was trying to, like, go into what people, they eat, how the people pursue some food, such as pizza and hamburger and hot dogs, those are the popular food that are most people they take. So I tried to fit into that, but it didn't work. Um, when it came to watching movies, playing video games with some of their friends, I tried that, but it never worked also. So I tried many, many things, but it didn't work. The only thing that worked was to drive. <laughs> <laughs> So that worked for me. <laughs> I definitely took some steps to adjust, adjust to the culture. Uh, when I, uh, I feel like even now I'm, st I'm still like taking steps. Uh, of course, everything started with the language. So after like I spoke with people, I, I like finally l lost the fear of speaking. So that was the first one. And then even though I felt ready for the culture, there were still things that I didn't understood or like just like cues within people or the way people like act within each other here in America. So that was the next step, like figuring that out so I could, um, I guess, interact with them <laughs> at the same level um, while still having my, you know, my own thing. I think the most time I just play or live with my Chinese friends because um, I think they can help me to connect with the American, but um, and that daily life or is the style lifestyle is different. My first language is Kalenjin, and then my second language is Kiswahili, and then my third language is English now. English, I've been brought up knowing English as a subject, so I only know English as a written content, but not a verbal communication language. So to adjust to that, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> it was really tough. But coming to here, like trying to connect with other people, I had like to unle to get rid of all those stuff and like, okay, so how am I gonna connect with a new a new culture? How am I going to fit into it? And how am I going to be counted as among us uh, people in America here for the few years that I'm going to be here? So that really taught me how to keep calm and just humble and to learn and to listen from people around me, to listen from the environment around me and just to know more, be curious to know more. So. Stage four, the acceptance stage. At this point, the foreigner has accepted the new culture. They feel at home in the new country, as well as their home country. They can relate to people, they feel confident and see things in a happier light. I consider myself multicultural. Absolutely, uh, and I love that. <laughs> I love that about me, I guess, uh, because again, it, it's going back to the, I see the world through two lenses now, through my Guatemalan lens and my American lens, uh, and that like helps me differentiate things. And again, I, it just makes me a better person, and I, I cherish that, I appreciate it. If I'll be with an American people, then probably I'll try to adapt into their culture and like just eat their food and just hang out with them. But in between there also, there's a Kenyan um, characteristic within me because I'm not going to succumb into everything in America here. So I'll still be unique, that person spending 21 years in Kenya. So that means it's ingrained in me. And I think in my life, when I um, back China during the summer, I will need to, um, tell myself here is uh, China and uh, it's not like the America. Like I don't miss my country that much anymore. I would of course 
I, I, of course, I'm still part of Guatemala and I still like it and I want to go see my family. I don't find myself looking for like uh, something to fill the void anymore because I don't think it's there. But I, I still feel connected to, to Guatemala. So whenever I like find something that it's like from over there or even just Latin America, I'm like so excited. You know, it's like, yes. For the past three years that I've stayed here in America, um, I've really adapted to some of the cultures and I've get to interact with many friends. And I like the culture itself. It's really good. It's beautiful. People are good. Though sometimes I have some memories in Kenya. But I would like this to stay here for a long, uh, long time, a little bit, to experience more out of it, to get my education to a higher level here in America. Uh, to get a different world perspective from the way I could be brought in Kenya. So probably take some time here in America and try to learn all those things.